Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Retro Game Hall here on part two of my September pickups. Uh, part one, if you haven't already checked it out, you can click the link, pow, right there, so you can check out my game pickups for the month of September. Uh, part two, like we always do here, we're going to be checking out the accessories, boxed items, all kinds of just way cool shit. Well, I'm going to sit here and talk about him, and Chuck's just enjoying his Capri Sun. He's taking a little break. So, but um, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it, man, show you guys this big pile of awesome I got on the table here in front of me. Okay, so first we got a few additions to the reference section here in the Retro Game Lounge, which, hey, I don't know about you, man, we could always use a little bit of help. I mean, some of these, right. some of these games, I mean, they call it NES hard for a reason. You know, that's like the measure of skill in video games, if you ask me. So first, pre-Wikipedia. Yes, pre-Wikipedia. This is before the internet, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. We got the un ultimate unauthorized Nintendo game strategies. Winning strategies for 100 top games. Uh, you got all kinds of stuff in here. Sports games, California games, Akari Warriors. Um, it does have pictures, actually, uh, so you get little reference points, bubble bobble, all kinds of cool stuff. I always love collecting uh, these old strategy guides because, believe it or not, you can actually find some pretty good tips in here um, on some of the older NES games. Just little things that, some things that even haven't even made it to the internet yet, believe it or not. I've actually found a few of those things. So, if you can pick up these little guides, you can usually get them for a couple of bucks. I definitely recommend it. What? What's so funny? What, what, what the fuck is this, though? What I don't is know. this, They're like, always weird like that. Coyote Caballero? Gaucho like a, motherfucker. He's like right? a werewolf or something. Like what? Yeah. What the fuck he's is like, that? But he's were, harmless. He's got werewolf a, cowboy. Yeah, he's, he's got a, his little he's hobo. A fucking, he's a bum. Wow. So playing Nintendo games will not only make you a furry, it'll make you homeless. Like your parents will throw you out. Mm. Maybe for being a furry. Okay. So next up, we got a little uh, pickup that I got from eBay. Actually, the Nintendo Pack Source, which I actually had when I was younger. I was a Nintendo Power subscriber actually for years, like well into the GameCube era. And they sent out little um, extra things this month. Sometimes it'd be like VHS tapes or little extra guides and things like that where you get a little bit of extra information. And what the pack source does basically is it gives you information on the actual games. Uh, so it kind of rates them uh, based upon like skill, graphics, like fun factor, all kinds of things. Um, I'm not really sure how accurate this is gonna be. Like, do you wanna like pick a game and I'll find it and we'll see if they're full of shit? Let me get some Mike Tyson's punch out. All right. Uh, 4.5 out of 5. That's pretty accurate. Okay. I, 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 I can go with that. Yeah. Now, a shitty game. Friday the 13th. Let's, let's be festive. Uh, graphics a 3.5. And fun factor is a 3 out of 5. Wait, wait. Okay, I just happened to look over here. What did, what does Zelda say? 4. So they're saying it's almost as good as Zelda. Almost. Well, it's a point higher, technically. Uh, so it's like 20% better. Okay, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, and that's the first Zelda game too. That's, like, I don't, I don't know how you know, I feel This guy's about bullshit. That. I don't really care. <laughs> so next up, we got a Nintendo Power Strategy Guide. I actually collect the guides that are in this series. Uh, this one's for Donkey Kong Country. Uh, not one of the ones I've had. There's all kinds of little great guides in this series that were originally put out by Nintendo themselves, straight from Nintendo Power. Um, like the Mario Mania ones uh, that you guys saw, uh, top secret codes and passwords. There's one for Link to the Past. Um, for Final Fantasy, there's all kinds of, of these great guides, and it's really cool because you got like full color pictures, maps, Level breakdowns, things like that. Yeah, so power ups, power ups, all kinds whatever. of stuff. So if you didn't want to bother like going watching a YouTube video of a playthrough, <coughs> um, these are where it's at. Yeah, like if you just want a complete map of the level, so to help you guide through it, this is actually still really helpful, even in the in the information age. You know, oh yeah, the internet. I still like having these things, especially for the higher level games like um, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy Legend Zelda, stuff like that that takes a while to play. It's always nice to have a guide with you. Oh Just yeah, that was the easy up so uh, when well, I was absolutely. working at Babbage's, I was like, you can't have this, can't have this game without the fucking strategy guide. Oh yeah, dude. Like, like you gotta have a strategy guide. You gotta have a strategy guide. Like, oh, Chrono Trigger? You oh, you're gonna need this. And there's four different versions. Yes. You know. And you need to buy all four of them. You got to get the platinum version. Okay, so next up, we're gonna move on to my personal favorite part of Retro Game Hall that I get to do every month for you guys, which is box accessories. You guys know I absolutely love these things, and I seem to be a bit of a bloodhound for them. I find they're really obscure ones. Um, so my good buddy, the IC One Tommy, uh, Chuck and I's friend, um, go ahead and check his channel out. You can see the link there below to the IC One. Really funny guy. Uh, please, I'm not just saying that because he's my friend, guys. The, his videos make me laugh my ass off. Please check him out. Um, he and I were actually uh, at the most recent gamers exchange over at East Starland, of which Chuck and I are former champions, by the way. Mm. So uh, they had a few things there, as usual. They always uh, do little live auction things, which is kind of cool because it's like a live version of eBay where you get to bid, you know, right there in person against somebody. And 
there didn't really seem to be many people bidding this time. Like, I didn't really have a lot of competition. Um, I actually only got bid against once on one item. So I only had to go up five bucks from my original price. So I pretty much got everything for the base price. And uh, this was no exception. This is actually something that Tommy and I split uh, because they came in a pair. There was two of these, so we each took one, got them for 10 bucks a piece. I've actually been after this for quite a while, uh, the video shooter. Um, some of you may recognize the shape of this gun. I'm sure that Chuck will. Chuck, what is the shape of that gun? There? I believe that, that would be the Sega Zapper. Yes, from the Sega Master System. Yeah. It's, and you know what else it looks like? Remember Photon? Oh, laser shit. tag. You're it looks right. Like the laser tag. Gun. Oh, it totally does. It does. Like I'm sure a lot of you don't remember laser tag when it was actually a home unit. Yeah. That started way before you could actually go to like a little store and do it. Yeah. You know, we were playing with the really ghetto infrared guns. With the little vests. Yes, you had to wear a whole vest and everything, and they made the cartoon show out of it, yeah. where it actually shot lasers, and we're like, this would be awesome. So I've been after this one for a while. This is definitely one of the rarest, if not the rarest, um, shooter for the NES. It's just so unorthodox. It's not an official Nintendo release. There's no approval on it on here. And one really weird thing... You guys um, are asking this shit. Yeah, this, this is weird. <laughs> Chuck and I noticed. And I'll, I'll give you guys a close-up shot right now so that you can see it. Um, in this picture that you're looking at, everything in that picture is real, except for two things. The kid, who for some reason is hiding behind the couch like his TV's out to kill him or something, <laughs> and the television, and the NES next to it. That does not look like an NES at all. I, I guess that they couldn't do it for, for licensing reasons. I guess, you know, the, the visual image of the Nintendo, I, I would think, is copyrighted. Uh, but I don't know, it just struck me as really weird that they would go through all that trouble to photograph that real room and not hire a child actor. I mean, what? Yeah, seriously, what? I, I get they, they the couldn't drawing get in, like, that in. Somebody's kid. And that know? is a creepy ass drawing. It is. Especially the way he's sitting. It looks like his foot is actually like missing, even though it's there. It is. It looks like he's got one leg, but obviously it's supposed to be. He's like sitting he looks like on his of, heel. You remember my buddy? Oh. oh, that's what it looks like. Oh, the, my buddy was creepy as fuck. I know, wasn't it? That actually looks really strange. Oh, that was. Re he does look like a my buddy. He does look like a my buddy. That's really weird. So. Oh, fuck him yeah. and kid sister. 1988, <laughs> man. <laughs> 1988, definitely a really weird year for accessories. But this was like the kind of the wild west of video game accessories. You know, you didn't have to be licensed like you do now. So. Uh, really glad to have this one and was definitely glad to get to share one with my buddy, uh, the Icy one. So he's got one in his collection too. Okay, so next up, we've definitely got an item uh, that I've been looking for for quite a while. Um, we talked about Splatterhouse here on uh, Retro Game Hall slash Retro Game Lounge before. You guys know I'm a big fan. Um, I'm one of the few people, and Chuck is actually, who actually liked uh, the updated version. I thought it was okay. a really fun game. Uh, very underrated. I mean, it wasn't a triple-A game, but nah. dude, dude, it was fun. Who cares? And they put out this little item uh, as a collector's item uh, when the original game was released. I think it was a GameStop or something, like a special item when you buy the collector's edition. Uh, you get a little trinket with it. And a uh, funny story, I'd actually bought uh, the unboxed version, not realizing that there was a boxed version, and actually sold it uh, to a fellow Splatterhouse collector. I'll give a shout out to my buddy Jake over at East Starland. Um, I found a really good home with him. I'm always happy to help out um, a fellow collector who loves the things that I love, you know, Splatterhouse, Bomberman, anything like that. Like, I'll definitely go out of my way to help those guys. So I basically uh, sold that to him and broke even and bought the boxed version, as you can see here. Comes with the new Splatterhouse logo. Okay, guys, this is definitely one of the more awesome items um, as far as collector's edition go because normally those things are like little throwaway teeny figures or something like this this is actually something really fucking cool i gotta admit it's the terror mask and this is not plastic guys this is like resin so you can see the stand there is engraved uh says splatterhouse on it it's all cool and stuff nice wood base and everything i mean what do you think, man? I think this, 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 no, is, this cool. is pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is really neat. You know, this if nothing else, this is like something perfect to go on the shelf of your rack of games or something oh, like yeah. that as a little trinket. Um, such an iconic thing, at least for me, is, you know, the vision of the terror mask. That's just so cool, man. I was so elated just to get this, just to have this in the collection. So next up, we've got a complete inbox, although the box is really messed up. I don't know why I bid on this item. I, I don't remember being this jacked up when I was bidding on it, but I was kind of doing three things at once. But hey, whatever. These are still pretty hard to find. We might actually use this one day. Uh, the Acclaim Wireless Infrared Remote Controller. And as you can see, dude, what is... <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> It's like the fucked up Max L commercial. That's exactly what I was thinking. Except you can tell they have his shirt on a string. Yes. And instead of the milk and cookies are about to like do that. All right, that does, that looks a little different than what I think it is. But 
And of course, he has nothing but acclaimed games over there. He's got, you know, Rambo and uh, WrestleMania, WrestleMania, Airwolf, you know, everything like that. And God, look at that. Why is he having to stretch up? And look, I was about to say, like, I'm confused by this whole picture. And why are there stars everywhere? What? The, why is he... He's blasting in the space. What is going on? What is going know. on? And I know this is probably added in later, but it kind of looks like they just had, like, a red rope attached to some shit and just told him to hold it like <laughs> that. <laughs> no, I, you got to give them a look at that. Like, it's, I don't even understand this shit. Pinpoint accuracy up to 30 feet, even though he's only 5 feet away from the television. That's okay. <laughs> That's definitely strange, but I, I love little bits of strings like this, especially for the NES, because, I mean, Chuck and I grew up with this stuff, and there was stuff like this was everywhere. I mean, it was like, you couldn't throw a rock without oh, having no. 50 things like this at a toy store. Um, just all kinds of different things. This one, I think, is at least, yeah, it's black sealed, so it is Nintendo approved, but it's from Acclaim, so it's not really a big deal. So, very cool. Um, definitely want to get a box upgrade at some point, because that crap is toasty as shit. But you know what? If there's a where are they now... Where's where, this kid? Where are you now? Yeah, are you out there? If so, what are leave, you doing? Leave us a message. Please! I... I want to know what happened to those cookies and that milk. I want to, I want to know how they did that with that milk. Did they like perfectly time it? So next up we got the Turbo Touch 360 for the Super Nintendo. Again, another kind of Wild West um, accessory for the Super Nintendo. Not Nintendo approved. At least there's no Nintendo seal in here. Uh, this one definitely has a very odd kind of guarantee on the back where it says no more blisters or quote numb thumb. I never heard anyone say that. Back when I was a kid playing Nintendo games, I don't think Numb I ever thumb, had. I've never heard that. No, that's I've, a, no. I've never had problems with my thumbs. And that just looks like Braille to me. That almost it, look, look like it, Braille, it looks actually. like it, it seems like a controller for a blind person. Yes. It's got like Braille. It does. It does look like it has Braille, uh, but it also has turbo um, turbo features for all the buttons and a Good. really odd freaking shape on that thing. That's kind of strange looking. It is. It looks, it like, looks like a Sega. They kind of tried to bite off Sega a little bit. It looks like the SNES like ate too much and like got fatter or something like that and then the controller like gained weight. Like we're going from 8-bit to 16-bit. <laughs> but it still has a great personality. It still has a great personality, yes. So Don't I don't know. Judge. This is this is definitely one of the more unusual SNES controllers. Uh, I've seen this one around so uh, cool to have it in the box. So next up, uh, we actually just have a box. Uh, it does have the plastic tray in it uh, for these two controllers. This is the Dual Turbo Wireless Remote System, again from Acclaim. Acclaim seems to like their, their wireless controllers for the Nintendo Entertainment Systems. Um, this is definitely one of the rare, if not the rarest, uh, Super Nintendo uh, controller-based accessory. You really do not see too many of these complete in the box. Uh, these things are going for 50 to 60 bucks at least. Um, this is definitely one of the quality ones, actually, as far as I'm concerned, as far as aftermarket. Um, these controllers are really well built. I've actually played with these before. A buddy of mine growing up had them, and they actually worked actually pretty well. Um, you know, infrared technology advanced a little bit uh, from the NES era over to Super NES, and these actually didn't work so bad. They're pretty hardy controllers. So I'm hoping um, I can get the actual controllers um, and the sensor to go in here so I can complete this in the box. Uh, hopefully for under the going rate, you know, because uh, this stuff definitely is not getting any cheaper. So next we got a little GameCube trinket. Uh, it's a little pouch uh, made for holding uh, GameCube discs. So you can see it's kind of like a CD pouch. Uh, this, as it turns out, I found out actually went in a, um, a complete uh, console box. I believe it was the Four Swords um, GameCube edition uh, where it came with the packing game and this actually came with it. I, I don't, please don't quote me on that, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but I'm 99% sure that's what it was. Uh, so actually to complete uh, that GameCube console in the box, you need this, as this is one of the featured items. So just picked this up from a couple of boxes from a vendor that I do business with, just had them thrown in with the other couple games. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm on my way to completing that particular GameCube console, I've got the smallest piece now. So next we got definitely one of the weirder things in the history of Nintendo. I'm sure that uh, Chuck remembers these. Chuck, what went in these? That would be the Game Boy holder. Very good. Um, if you guys were around in the late 80s, early 90s, back in the heyday of the original Game Boy, um, you hung around stores like Toys R Us, uh, which most of us got our games at. That was one of the, one of the main places to get your Nintendo games at. Uh, this is one of the things, um, kind of midway through the Game Boy's life cycle, that they would sell the Game Boys in. This is officially branded by Nintendo. It says it right there. Uh, where you'd have the Game Boy kind of loose here in the package, you'd have your game, uh, your connect wire and accessories and stuff like that would go right here. So it really wouldn't be in the box, you know, so to speak. Like they kind of went away from the cardboard boxes and they put it in this. I think to kind of showcase the product more, um, because you couldn't really see what it looked like in the box. They wanted people to actually be able to see these things. So since this is clear, you know, be able to pick it up and look at it. 
Um, so I just thought it'd be cool to kind of showcase a Game Boy actually, you know, in its original element as it was presented at Toys R Us, um, you know, on a shelf here, you know, get one to put in here, you know, complete it with the accessories in the game, you know, Tetris game and everything, and just kind of reproduce um, something that Chuck and I grew up with, you know, just going to Toys R Us and seeing these in the display case. Okay, so next up we got a pair of joysticks that I actually got again at the East Starland auction. Um, won these in a lucky bid. Again, nobody bid against me. Um, I got the pair of them for twenty dollars. So I guess ten dollars per joystick. I'll show you this one first. Uh, this one is the Quick Joy NI5. Just kind of your basic uh, flight stick kind of thing. It does have a few extra buttons. Um, just all kinds of little extra things. Games for like Top Gun flight sims, that kind of thing. I will admit that it does look a little bit nicer um, than your conventional NES joystick. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a little bit more refined, less bland. I don't know if that's a, is that a volume? Volume. I don't know what that is, but auto fire, you know, it has turbo buttons and things on it. Um, oh, that's the auto fire speed control. Oh, okay. Oh. So you can you can adjust your turbo, actually, excuse oh, me, with a dial. Shit. That's actually pretty cool. It's got suction cups on the bottom, so it will stick to your coffee table. That's pretty cool. But I'll tell you what's a lot cooler is this other joystick. I had never seen this one before, but I gotta tell you, this is the coolest NES joystick I've ever seen. I mean, this is seriously awesome. I guess this thing's gotta take batteries or something. Okay, so this is the QuickJoy N Pro, and what really throws this one over the top, guys, you see that little gauge on the front, that little freaking like turbo boost gauge, a little Fast and Furious shit that lights up? That's not just for effects, it actually does that. All this actually lights up. Um, I think this thing runs on batteries. I could be wrong. So I don't think the, the Nintendo cord is getting enough power to actually juice these things, but it's got an on-off switch for your LEDs. I'll show you guys a picture of that so you can actually see what it looks like. You can actually adjust all these things. Turbo fire for all your buttons and stuff. Um, it's lefty and righty compatible, uh, so all you southpaws out there are taken care of. You can adjust your turbos. I mean, this is a really elaborate joystick. Um, I cannot believe I got this for ten dollars complete in the box. I've never, I've never really seen one of these. So if I haven't seen it with all the accessories I've got, then that tells you how damn rare these things are. So uh, really cool, man. I'm actually looking forward to taking this one out of the box and uh, oh, yeah. breaking out some top gun with Chuck and just seeing how how much we suck at it, probably. But uh, oh, a lot. But I'm, we're gonna we're gonna be too busy looking oh, at that gauge. I'm gonna be like, immersed, dude, immersed fully in gameplay. Fast and furious, man. Double clutching that motherfucker. You know? <laughs> granny shifting. Yeah, it's granny shifting. <laughs> So last but certainly not least, guys, we've definitely got uh, my crown jewel for this month's edition of Retro Game Hall. I've been after one of these for months because they are not easy to find, especially at a reasonable price. They didn't sell that many of them. I'm sure a lot of you remember. Uh, Chucky, what color was the original zapper for the NES? Gray. Exactly. That's the one I grew up with. That's the one that came with my set. Um, I guess they eventually changed it because they got some flack of it looking too much too like a real. gun. Even though A, it looks nothing like a gun, and B, it's got a giant freaking six foot cord attached to it, which just makes it look stupid. So I guess they eventually changed it, you know, to appease the, the PTAs and parents and stuff of the world and made it orange uh, to make it stick out a little bit. So um, about halfway through the NES life cycle, all the guns were changed over to orange, you know, all the things in the action sets and whatnot, all those were changed over to orange. And that was a lot uh, later on in the NES life cycle, so they didn't sell nearly as many as they did in the initial run. So as much with the Grey Zapper, they sold them separately. So if you didn't get the action set, you could buy it separately. And these, complete in the box, guys, I gotta tell you, this is, I mean, we're not talking unicorn material here, but for old school NES accessories, like original OEM stuff, this is definitely one of the hardest things I've had to find. It's up there with Pegasus. It really not quite is. unicorn, but No, Pegasus. not quite unicorn, but Pegasus. I mean, finding a Rob the Robot is a lot easier than this. I mean, this is tough, and these things are usually not cheap. Um, at all when you can actually find them. So I was very glad to have this uh, completing the box. Um, I opened it up. Um, I apologize, we're not going to do that on camera. So it's a little bit tricky to get out of the box. It does have the foam and everything in there. The gun looks pretty much new. Um, it looked pretty unused actually, and the foam's in good shape. Um, the stickers on the front look good. You know, it's not much scuffing up or anything, not a lot of corner wear. This is definitely a pretty sharp box considering its age. So I've already got the gray one actually brand new in the box, still in the original factory wrapping. This is going to look really cool uh, sitting next to it on the shelf so I can have both versions of the gun. Complete. And check it out. Look at how much fun this family is having shooting shit. That is just yes. a family that stays together. Killing ducks is awesome. Killing ducks. This Fuck that dog. Yeah. 
So that about wraps up the September edition of Retro Game Hall. Thank you everyone so much for stopping by. If you have not done so already, you want to check out part one when we show off the games and whatnot we picked up in September, go ahead and click that link down in your description box. Man, give us some love. Check us out. We love doing these videos. We love interacting with you guys. I want to give a very special thanks to Chuck, the co-host of Retro Game Lounge, one of my very, very good friends and just all around cool dude. Chuck, thank you so much uh, for joining me here on this month's edition of Retro Game Lounge. Thank you for having me. I, I really hope you've had a good time, man. Oh, yeah. I've, I've had a blast here. All right, well, since Chuck is the very special guest here, I'm going to let Chuck send you guys off the way we always do on Retro Game Hall. So, Chuck, take it away. Thank you. To all of our fellow gamers, retro or not, game on.